Gemini, hello, beautiful souls. Thank you guys for joining me here and welcome to my table. If you're new here, hello, my name is Zachary. It's nice to meet you. Pull up a chair. And if you're returning, it's good to see you guys again. Uh, let's get into this. So a couple channel messages came through and then we'll get into Oracle cards and tarot as we do. Gemini, my Gemini friends. I received one message, essentially two, but one through channeling here, all for not, all for nothing. In trying to sit on this message a little bit further or request some more information to come through, Spirit is asking me to just move forward with the message. So as a Gemini son here myself, I'm interested to see what comes forward with this message. Initially, I'm getting a feeling that someone is feeling this, maybe even disappointment, lack of hope, loss of hope. Something was all was for nothing. OK, work that you put into something, um, a new venture. I, again, I'm not quite sure what this is surrounding yet, and it's going to be different for everybody. But there's definitely a thought or emotion surrounding like this was pointless. There was no point to this. Um, the last thing that came through was burrito. Burrito, Gemini. So I'm asking, what in the hell about a burrito? Um, Spirit just said, made you smile. The whole point of that coming through, well, it did make me smile. I feel like there is um, not quite mischievous energy, but a call from Spirit, from your own higher self as well, your inner child, to play a little bit more, to dip a little bit more into nonsensical humor, right? Uh, burrito doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I literally can't connect it to anything, but it does make me smile. So it feels like there's a little bit, a mm, little bit of entrenchment towards whatever this all for naught is. All right, let's move forward here. So only one Oracle card came out here to start. We'll pull some more. This is the Starseed Oracle. I remember, I remember, <laughs> I remember Gemini. I remember soul plan, the fated life versus the destiny life. So when this card comes through, um, and sorry if this isn't focusing super well, I'm trying to, huh, all these lights are grabbing my camera's attention. Um, the faded life. So the faded life is our factory settings, what we're born into this life with. Uh, our parents, socioeconomic status, siblings, friends, whatever. The way we start life out. Our destined life is what the soul wanted to experience after coming here. So I am getting this message uh, so far with the all for not. It seems to be connected to this transition. There is a lot of growth that's happening with all of the signs right now, especially with Pluto. I think going back into Capricorn, this kind of karmic tie up on things. There are layers that are appearing for everyone that are uh, to to give you another opportunity to heal or to to shed something. So I think. Hmm. Even I guess relating a little more to my own personal experience, tapping into my own Gemini energy, um, I can totally relate to that. There have been everything. <laughs> everything has come up, right? Uh, to be examined again. And although it's not easy, um, it is I'm finding it is possible taking these steps and really starting to break things down instead of letting the emotion overwhelm us. And that's kind of where I'm feeling this all for naught is coming through. Maybe you're feeling inundated by the past. I thought this was dead, right? Um, and it is. <laughs> but it needs to be removed from your experience too. So this isn't, ah, ah, okay. That all for naught, what I'm getting, um, you've put work into healing, whatever this is. Maybe you've gone to counseling, maybe You've done the journaling, you've, you know, meditated, all this shit. And it's still coming up right now. And you're feeling like, well, what the hell was the point? Why did I put this work into this? Like, none of this makes any sense. If this is you, please take a breath. <laughs> take a few breaths. Try to focus on your breath throughout the day. This is definitely not an energy that will persist. And if you can see that that's the case, I feel like this is going to be a lot easier. Go make a burrito, <laughs> distract yourself. Um, but yes, this moving from the faded life to the destined life, I feel like um, that could be a part of the all for naught too. 
maybe you've been working to change. You, you can feel what your destined life is, and it's very different from what your fated life was or is. And with things regressing right now, you're, again, feeling like, like, what the hell is the point? I put all this work into moving in this direction, and I feel like I'm just getting knocked back down. I feel it's really, really important right now, Gemini, to not allow those thoughts in particular to take root, especially with Pluto retrograding into Capricorn right now. Um, was it November 17th? It goes back into Aquarius, uh, which is still a difficult energy to deal with. But this retrograde motion, there's a lot of shit that's coming up with Capricorn, Saturn, karmic stiff. OK, so take a breath. Take a breath. Let's see if we can't get through this. Okay. All right, Spirit, what, uh, any other Oracle cards? No. So we'll do, we'll go right on into um, the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Oracle. It was the least amount of information and Oracle cards I've been given before a message for quite some time. What do we have for Gemini here, please, Spirit? Additional messages. Oh. Interesting. Uh, rabbit here at the bottom, that does definitely stand out. So this is a call or reminder that what when it comes to fear, we're not ignoring fear and fear is never going to disappear. We're fine tuning the way that we communicate with our fear. The role that um, or weight that fear has in our life. Those are things that we can kind of kind of control or shift. But with the rabbit coming through here, there's a caution to how much you're speaking about your fears or which fears you are speaking about. Again, I'm not saying I think it's a dangerous game to pretend that fear, any other unsavory emotion doesn't exist because that will always come back up. But with the rabbit coming through, the encouragement is to be cautious about who you're talking to, what it is that you're talking to, the consistency that you're talking about, because that fear will hear you and come make itself real. Um, what I'm getting from that is it's important when we're talking about fear or managing fear to set up spaces, uh, even setting up a protective circle, going into your sacred space, asking your spirit team, guides, angels, however you wanna look at that energy, to open up space for you where it's safe to start processing fear and to be honest about your fear. Be careful who it is you're talking to, okay? Not erasing it completely. So this did come through in reverse, um, the crocodile. And I'm going to read this in the book here. The crocodile, um, there is a note of like patience, knowing when to strike kind of thing. Um, I can remember which element that is. <laughs> it's water, the crocodile. So resting, submerging, collecting energy, and cooling off. Um, when in balance, wise, patient, a silent powerhouse, out of balance, feels stuck or lashes out. So this is totally, being in reverse here, I feel that's more the stuck energy. You guys are feeling stuck. So back to this all for naught, whether it's the process from the faded life to the destined life, healing that you thought you were over and done with, um that's coming up right now this is causing a feeling of stuckness like what the hell is the point why did i do all that work if i'm right back in the same place you're not back in the same place and that's that's the part i feel is really important so far coming through here to recognize is we don't go you know we're on a spiral up or down you're hitting this point and it could be a little bit of retrograde motion back with pluto and capricorn like i said but you're seeing this layer from a more enlightened space. So recognize that it is seeing this layer differently. It's not, it is not the same situation here. So don't allow it to be. Don't allow that to sink in in that way. To bring into balance, um, rest. Rest, Gemini. Maybe you need to take a rest. Actually, that's, that's interesting. Do you want me to share that? Okay. Um, the message of rest. So I don't want to go too far into it, but just personally, in my own personal practice, pulling cards for myself, whatever. The Four of Swords has come up a lot, which represents rest, healing of the heart. Um, and on the surface, it's taken me some time to figure out like why my next steps here is the Four of Swords. And as I'm looking at you know my job, I don't know, whatever I'm doing in my life, I go, I've been resting. 
I feel anyway. There's been a lot of downtime for a while. I need more rest. Are you kidding me? Um, especially last night, tapping into these Pluto retrograde energies in Capricorn can actually be, uh, I'm, I'm finding even myself like some hyper, hyper healing is possible if you're willing to uh, go a little bit deeper into that emotion. Don't, uh, don't allow yourself to be defeated in this moment. This is not about defeat. It's, it's actually to show you something very helpful. What I found without getting too much into things is this rest, this concept of rest, the four of swords coming through is actually referring to components of myself that need to be put to rest or that need to be given a rest. So this could be the divine masculine, the divine masculine in the shadow being hyper protective, um, any hyper action that's connected to trauma, um, those sorts of things. Okay. Anger stories, programs relating to our own defeat or restriction. These are all things that can be put to rest. So that's kind of what I'm getting from this. The action to take here and rest is to, to let something rest. I've been finding if it's helpful, you guys, like literally going into meditation and having conversations with these components of yourself, especially as you're finding them or, or they're making themselves known to you, literally letting them know you're off duty. You can take a rest now. Thank you for your assistance. Whatever help was given in the past right now, we don't need your service any, any longer, right? Okay, so let's get into your tarot messages here. I haven't pulled this deck out for a second. We're going to do um, Murder of Crows, Murder of Crows Tarot. For Gemini, please, Spirit, what is going on for Gemini? Huge shout out to my channel members, you guys. Oh, Ace of Cups falls out here. So a new emotional opportunity presenting itself. Could be a new relationship uh, for some of you outside of yourself. I do see that oh, <laughs> there's the Two of Cups here at the bottom, too. Ah, it could be, could be a relationship coming forward, Gemini. Friend, romantic, family, what have you, business partner potentially as well. I feel like with the rest of the message here, though, this feels like something that, like if you're looking for a relationship, uh, well, even if you're in one and it's not maybe where you want it to be, maybe you're feeling unhappy or dissatisfied, especially because of the other emotions that are coming up. This process of putting whatever to rest opens up these opportunities for better connection. No matter what the status of your relationship is to yourself and to others. I love that. Okay. Um, huge shout out to my channel members. If you guys are interested in becoming a channel member yourself, there's a link in the description of the video. There's also a join button next to the subscribe under this video. Feel free to... Um, Subscribe if you haven't already. Death falls out here too. It's time to put something to rest, you guys. Totally. If you're interested in personal readings, I do have those available. There's a link in the description of the video that will take you to my website. I would love to help you guys out with something a little bit more particular to your situation. This one, okay. The Fool, <laughs> yay, this is your hope. Hopes and dreams. So with the fool here, this is um, a new journey, a new beginning. This is uh, also this archetype, like what I'm getting is um, like revivifying. As we're talking about factory settings here, what's coming to mind is the factory, the factory setting of uh, before you came here. Your destined life, what you wanted to accomplish your experience, I'm feeling like that experience or that vibration is actually more directly tied to your factory setting before coming here. The challenge is your factory setting here as a human, right? Learning that that is not the end all be all. And that can be a trap for a lot of people. There is a need for faith, for taking a leap of faith, especially when all you've known is a certain, I don't know, poverty or loss, trauma. You see what I'm saying? We all have a childhood for sure. We all have a faded life and it's different for everybody. They're, you know, different extremes, but being in the hope here, you are, you are hoping maybe to tap in a little bit more to your faith, to be able to start a new journey. I feel like you guys are feeling this no matter 
where you are here in this message, you're feeling this potential probability even of something new starting, but then there's this hang up. Something is feeling like it's getting in the way, this all for naught. Like that life that you want to live is just on the other side of this glass and you can see it, but for whatever reason, you just can't touch it. And this is giving a defeating feeling, but you're still hoping to take this trek. Okay, let's get a little further into it. This is the Curious Travels Tarot. What do we have here for Gemini, please, Spirit? There's justice here at the split. So um, a balancing effect for sure coming through. The component of fairness is standing out regarding justice. It feels like for someone, there may be an over obsession or connection to striking balance for yourself in the, in the turn or in regards to like karma, feeling like you were slighted, that sort of thing. Being in the this kind of the shadow pile, being in that section, I feel like um, that is that is uh, hanging you up from forward progress. Okay, if that is if that's you. All right, what do we have here for Gemini, please, Spirit? This is a general message, everybody. So please keep that in mind. You are super intelligent. Please use your head, heart, and intuition to decipher if these messages are for you. And if they're not, please feel free to get them the hell out of here, all right? Wheel of Fortune here at the bottom. I do feel like things are changing, you guys. Difficulty has the ability to descend and optimism to endure right now. Okay, feel free to check out any other placements in your chart. We do have every sign in our chart. Just depends on which house. This one here. Okay, Three of Cups here at the bottom. This is your fear aversion. So this is um, victory. It's celebrating with those that you love and that love you as well. I get uh, as far as a fear aversion, anxiety coming through on this. Um, for some of you, there is a difficulty in. I'm gonna put that. Like you're not feeling like yourself in this process right now, which makes it really difficult to be the bright, beautiful, shining Gemini that you are, right? Maybe you feel like you have to play a certain role in social situations, that sort of thing. And you're just not, you just don't have it right now. Okay. For someone in particular, this is definitely not for everyone. For someone in particular, I do feel like there might be a third party situation going on. And there is a concern over that, which is understandable. Okay. So, <clears throat> general to start here, judgment. Totally, as we're talking about moving from the uh, faded life to the destined life. So you guys are hearing this call, like I said, with the fool, this new journey. You're feeling that that energy is probable, possible and probable. You can see it on the other end of this glass, this window, but you don't know how to get there. So that process of seeing this or feeling this, what's possible, what's probable, is the call. So your job at this time, I was saying this in the beginning here, um, is to go inside and figure out which components you want to remain, which maybe which components are there to start, and then which components you want to release, which components you may want to keep. Nobody else can do this for you. This is, this is all about you. I, like I was saying with Pluto retrograding into Capricorn, totally, this, that whole process is this call of judgment. Your job right now is to heed the call. This isn't about beating yourself up. This isn't about uh, feeling like things were not worthwhile or were pointless because you feel you're coming back to something. This is an opportunity to really actually get very, very clear about the truth of whatever's going on inside of you, components to other things. I mean, the things that, God, last couple of days especially that have come through for me have been mind-blowing. So... Um, I highly encourage you guys to carve out some time for you if you're not already doing that. Because there's a lot that can be seen, all right? Ace of Swords, the truth comes through here to clarify. There's a lot to be seen. The truth. 
And that's, um, like I'm saying, for, for me too, that's been going on these past couple of nights, especially. I feel like I've just gone super far down the rabbit hole. <laughs> and um, I'm grateful for it. It's, it's, how do you want me to put that? To... What's coming through that's interesting. I'm seeing this old wooden door and the message that's coming through is to push through, go through that door. In grabbing that handle and opening that door, you may collect a couple of slivers, but you want to go through that door. And the way that I take that is, um, like, I don't want to get too far into my stuff, but um, like last night, there was a relationship. Um, well, I can share it or whatever. Um, my ex-husband, actually, uh, we were already divorced, but he passed this time last year. And um, so that's, and he's a Capricorn. So uh, retrograding into Capricorn here, this is totally, I'm feeling this, you know what I'm saying? And um, there was definitely a situation, complex grief for sure, but it was a situation where I thought that I had healed, you know, everything that I needed to in order to move on. And um, I've noticed that he actually has been trying to come to me a lot recently too. And I'm just, I've just been saying like, I don't want to deal with it, right? I don't, I don't care. If you had something to say, you could have told me in life, right? Well, that's not really how I feel. Um, for as an example, with this door, it was a little prickly for me to allow a conversation to happen. But in allowing that conversation to happen, there's been some things illuminated where I'm now like, well, I'm glad I went through that door. Thanks for coming to my TED talk, you guys. Okay, so if it feels like there's something similar going on for you guys here too. Whatever is coming up in this retrograde motion, allow yourself to open that door. There may be a little bit of a little pinch, okay? Might be a little bit of pain, but pain is not the adversary. Pain is actually a wonderful teacher. Saturn teaches through pain. <laughs> um, so allow that process to come into your life. That's I'm feeling like this is the natural flow for you right now. Let it flow, baby. Okay. So good stuff coming through for you guys. Ooh, yeah, there may there may be some love. Gemini, you guys had a lot of really good love readings, especially. And I don't like to go too far into love, but I mean, I do. I love reading love. But um, as a general, to go too specific into love is just, yeah, I'd rather do it on a personal reading basis. I digress. We had the Ace of Cups and the Two of Cups that came through as we were shuffling a new emotional opportunity, new relationship starting, two of cups, that connection. In your good stuff, you have knight of cups. This card can also symbolize um, a new relationship beginning, an offer for a relationship, somebody coming in, you coming in to somebody else's life. Um, because this is in the good stuff, it's getting your cup filled is what's standing out right now, but it's not in a, a negative context at all. It's not in a, a lower vibration sense, I guess. It is getting your cup filled, whether that is just physical connection, um, an emotional connection coming with that, what have you. It's, it's um, reaping rewards is what's coming through here for me. But this requires that you open the door. Whoever this is for, where there is a new opportunity coming forward, relationship-wise, you got to open the door. Maybe there's some slivers involved in opening that door, too. I don't feel like this is something that you are going to regret, okay? Page of Pentacles comes through here, too, in the good stuff. So um, all pages are messengers to start. I am getting the message of a message coming through, especially with like an offer with the Knight of Cups here. Maybe you are, if you're on um, any of the online dating <laughs> apps or whatever, it could symbolize messages coming forward in that form. What comes to mind actually in that way is, in my own, I hate dating apps. I hate, I hate it. Oh my God. Um, definitely not a part of my life at this time and no judgment, no blame or shame. I understand how difficult it is to meet people in this day and age. Um, I certainly do prefer to meet people in person though. And I think that that might be the preference for most people, but also, I don't know. I know from personal experience and being on apps like that, there is this behavior where 
Uh, even if you, you know, like, wink, smile, whatever the icebreaker emoji is, if someone does this to you or you do this to another person, and then um, you're either the first person to initiate a conversation or they are, the other person, it seems like 90% of the time, doesn't respond, like totally goes to you right from the gate. Or you're doing that to people too. I feel like this is a human experience. There is something about the anonymity of electronics. I mean, I know this from YouTube for sure, you guys. There's a lot of keyboard warriors out there that think they got something on, you know, me for sure. <laughs> um, comments and that sort of thing. I'm definitely getting to a point where, you know what I mean? Um can suck a butthole. That's how I feel about that. But anyway, back to back to this, um, that behavior of wanting to initiate something and connecting in some way, but then also totally throwing it away at the chance to make it make a connection. It's it's the weirdest behavior. And I know you know what I'm talking about. Um, that's that's kind of what I'm getting from this is allow yourself like respond to that message. Be the first person to message. If it feels uncomfortable or weird, maybe to create a conversation, do it anyway. It is weird to build a relationship from the get go online. It's I, I don't feel like it's a natural way to build a. You can't feel somebody's energy real time. There there are components that are missing. So if this is the avenue that you're taking for love, put the work in. Is what I'm getting. Allow yourself to do that. Get creative about it, too. If it's boring, you know what I mean? If you don't like the the general, hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? What are you up to? Blah, blah, blah. I get that, too. That's annoying. Be creative about responses or about um, contacting people in the first place. Okay. But, yeah, it seems like there's um, something love-wise coming in for some of you. Okay. So what you don't see coming or what's in the dark right now, you have the hanged man. So the hangman is a need for a shift of perspective, really. What I'm getting from this is what you don't see coming or what's in the dark is this need for you to tie yourself up here to look at something differently. Back to the rest of the message here, as I'm saying, I don't want to repeat myself too much here. Um, this is There's been a request to see something differently. The information that's coming up, the experiences that are coming up, um, that this isn't all for nothing. The final push, interesting, is what's coming through on that. Getting through whatever is coming up for you guys right now in this moment, if you are willing to approach it, moving forward in the future, you won't regret this, is, is what I'm getting. You just need to see this, this thing, okay? Um, this is clarified by the Nine of Cups. Hey, this is a wish fulfilled. Could be childbirth for some of you. <laughs> be careful if you're not looking, if you're not looking to procreate at this time. Um, be extra cautious about that. Knight of Cups coming through in the good stuff here too with the Nine of Cups. Um, there is extra fertility here right now. So if that isn't something that you are wanting, be careful, Gemini. But for others of you, uh, a wish coming true. The Nine of Cups is about feeling, experiencing abundance, a feast, before it arrives. You feel content, you feel happy, you feel peaceful, because you know what this abundance, whatever this is that's coming forward, that can come forward, whatever your wish is, um, you know it's possible because you've experienced it before. Whether you've literally experienced it before in this life, or you've experienced it before because you've created the experience in your mind. There's no difference. <laughs> um, there's no difference. The brain doesn't know any different. And we've, we've studied this actually. Harvard has studied this a lot. So what you don't see coming here is an opportunity for you to receive what it is that you do want to receive. Back to the shift of perspective and everything else, the truth. There is a need, though, to get in the wavelength the right wavelength to bring whatever it is that you're seeking forward. And this requires that you not um, ignore what's coming up or feel like hopeless because it's coming up again. You guys can do this. All right. Um, your, mm, mm -hmm, your difficulty at this time or obstacle. So seven of swords. 
Seven of Swords here is a sneaky theft betrayal kind of energy. Can be diplomacy, um, taking just what's needed. I feel like the difficulty for you at this time is a little bit of taking just what's needed and this theft or betrayal kind of energy. You could be stealing from yourself by, um, by not approaching what needs to be approached. So with this card coming through too, there's like a, in sneaky, this can also be, um, oh, what is the word? Crafty or intelligent. So there may be a situation where you need to be intelligent. You need to be smart, which you are, of course winning the battle to avoid the war. So in the standard Rider weight deck, the individual is stealing swords from the camp um, so that they're not able to fight the other side here. So stealing, this action of stealing, you know, maybe not always, uh, maybe frowned upon kind of action. That action of theft actually avoided a lot of harm for many different people. You see what I'm saying? So being kind of sneaky in that way, being being intelligent about the moves that you're making. The difficulty for you right now is um, I, I am just getting this feeling of like wind being taken out of your sails because something you've come back to something at this point, you're feeling defeated. Don't let this defeat you. Don't defeat yourself. Please take this actually as a sign that you're so close to whatever this Nine of Cups is. What you don't see coming is the Nine of Cups is coming through. Your heart's wish. You're just cleaning up loose ends right now. Don't let that come across to you as if you're back in that or that you failed or that you haven't healed through something. Just tan up loose ends, okay? This is clarified here by the Ace of Cups. Interesting. So it does feel like um, there's that could be, you know, new relationship, new emotional opportunity coming through. It feels like um, for those of you that a relationship is coming forward, and this doesn't have to be just romantic, like I said, friend, business partner, friend, you know, family, whatever. This new connection or reconnection is difficult because it is new. I'm feeling like um, part of with the Seven of Swords here, there may be a desire for some of you, this is reconnecting because there have been a lot of readings with Gemini in uh, contacting somebody too. What I'm getting from this is it's difficult to let this be new. Do not dredge up the past. It's the sneaky kind of behavior, nobody needs to be jabbing anybody. If you're not ready, if this is a situation where you're reconnecting with someone, if you're not ready to let that be a new venture, then don't even open that door, is how I feel. Every situation's different, but this doesn't, this is not a time to be uh, just airing out your grievances to this person. It's about a new connection. One where spirit is coming through here is the mediator. <laughs> okay, um, let's pull, I feel like well, one of these here for Gemini, please. On difficulty, pay attention, look out for signs from the divine, acknowledge red flags. And then manifestation, law of attraction, thoughts become things come through here. Um, I feel like... What I was saying, with if this is a reconnection for some of you or a new opportunity with someone new, I feel like it's the same. Don't go back to the past. We're not bringing a past relationship into a new relationship, whether this is connecting with somebody again or connecting with somebody for the first time. Tableau Blanche, fresh, fresh slate, okay? Clean slate. Uh, and then pay attention. Um, that's the law of attraction is what I was trying to say. That's where the manifestation is coming in. Focus on what's probable and possible, not what's happened, okay? Pay attention, look out for signs from the divine, acknowledge red flags. I'm drawn back to the messenger component here. Um, for some of you, I do feel, I mean, as a communicative sign, right? As Gemini's, pay attention to what it is people are saying and how you feel about that, okay? All right, let's pull a blue angel oracle card here and then I am gonna... To close this off, and then we'll move into the extended portion of the reading, part two. Um, in the extended, we'll go over direct messages from your higher self, love and advice, career and advice, and 
what is most likely woo, being manifested for you at this time based on your thoughts and emotions. If you guys want to join me there, there'll be links in the description of the video. Okay, so ascension into light is what came through here. Let's read about it. As above, so below. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. What you perceive to be false are not false, but... <laughs> oh, I love this. What you perceive to be false are not false, but vital aspects of human nature. Qualities that offer important lessons about life and love. So this all for naught, that all for naught, you guys. This is... I feel like that's what it's saying. Please step away from that feeling or thought because it's not true. It's not a fault. It's not an accident either. It's actually very beneficial. At present, you cannot see things clearly because you are stuck within the illusion of good and bad, falsely believing that things are either one or the other. Interesting. And I would say, you know, like I, I gave you the example of um, uh, with my, my ex-husband there, part of why it's been difficult to have a conversation, to open that door again, to heal is this perception of good and bad. Okay, maybe you're struggling with something like that too. I would imagine you are. My jam friend. There are no faults or mistakes, only experiences your soul has chosen. Observe life without judgment and you will see that good and bad are only perceptions. You had judgment in your general too. Um, our judgments are actually fears and what we fear is our shadow self, which is part of our true nature, <laughs> which is what I was saying at the beginning. We're not ignoring fear. It is a part of who you are here as a human. You cannot just pretend it. I mean, you can, but you're going to have a bad time, Gemini. Everything has a reason, purpose, and an opposite. In light, there's dark, and in dark, there's light. One cannot exist without the other, and one is not better than the other. To become whole, you must embrace and love the fullness of your nature. Yep. Totally. Thanks for wrapping that up, Spirit. <laughs> okay, Gemini, I love you guys so much, and I hope that this message is helpful for you. Like I said, I'm going to move into the extended here. Oh, and I forgot to, oh my goodness. I'm going to move into the extended. If you guys want to join me, there are links in the description. I do have them for sale individually. And on the third tier of membership, um, you can have access to all of them if you're interested in that. I'm giving away a free reading. So the channel hit a year on October 6th. So to celebrate this wondrous occasion here, I'm giving away a free reading. I'm going to post um, in the description of the video, but also down in this corner here, there'll be a link to a video where you can receive the instructions on how to enter, okay? So if you're interested in that, check it out. I'll have this running until the end of the month. So every sign gets a chance to see this. Again, personal readings are open if you wanna check that out. If this reading did resonate with you guys, please like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. They're all great ways to support me and the growth of this channel. And I truly appreciate it. You are the reason why I do this. If you do feel called as well, and this resonates, I do have my Cash App and PayPal links in the description to donate. It's not mandatory, but to those who do support the channel in this way, thank you guys so, so much. I also could not do this without you. So please, Gemini, take care of yourselves, and I will see you all very, very soon. All right. Be well.